Good evening. It is 10 p.m. here in Seoul. I am Ari, the AI anchor with the headline news. The government gave out warnings that license suspensions would be imminent for the trainee doctors who had not returned to work. The health ministry began on-site investigations at major hospitals on Monday, and some 8,900 were still absent from their post nationwide. The officials have already secured evidence in relation to 7,000 trainee doctors and plan to notify them that the government will take steps to enforce disciplinary action. Meanwhile, a total of 40 medical schools have asked the education ministry for an increase of 3,401 students, which is much higher than the government plan increase of 2,000. The UN has appointed a new official to lead its operations in North Korea, raising hopes that UN workers will soon be able to enter North Korea for the first time since the COVID-19 pandemic. The United Nations headquarters announced that Joe Colombona was appointed the new resident coordinator for North Korea on March 1st. The appointment signals the possibility of UN workers or members of other international organizations possibly soon crossing North Korea's borders. South Korea and the U.S. have each named their chief negotiators for their next round of defense cost-sharing talks. Lee wu who previously served as the Consul General in Sydney, will lead South Korea's delegation consisting of relevant authorities from the Ministries of Foreign Affairs, Defense and Finance. The team will hold talks with the U.S. delegation, led by Linda Spech, the senior advisor and U.S. lead negotiator for security agreements at the State Department. Since 1991, South Korea has been shouldering the costs needed for U.S. troops to be stationed in Korea, and the two countries have regularly held talks on how to share these costs. South Korea's gross national income per capita logged growth last year, after seeing a sharp decline the year before due to stabilizing exchange rates. Preliminary data released by the Bank of Korea on Tuesday show that the country's gross national income per capita rose by 2.6% in 2023, jumping to 33,745 US dollars. Meanwhile, gross domestic product, which doesn't include overseas earnings, increased by 1.4% on year. The data is unchanged from the central bank's earlier estimate in January and marks the slowest growth seen in three years due to weak private consumption, which rose by only 1.8% on year. China has announced an ambitious 2024 economic growth target of around 5%, in line with analysts' expectations. Chinese Premier Li Chong delivered his government work report on Tuesday at the annual meeting of the National People's Congress. The country's annual parliamentary gathering, Lee also flagged higher defense spending, while hardening the rhetoric on Taiwan and dropping previous mentions of peaceful reunification. Budgetary plans included an increase in defense spending by 7.2% this year, similar to 2023. That brings us to the end of tonight's AI headline news. Thank you for watching. Good night.